Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we're going to be looking at a woodworking company that's decided to diversify their portfolio and offer their clients now CNC plans for purchase, which when completed will separate these end users from $1,600 approximately of their hard earned money. Let's analyze their video and see if what they've produced is an actual CNC production robot built correctly. CNC technology is everywhere around us. 3D printers, plasma cutters, milling machines. But you can have 3D technology in your workshop with the ShopNote CNC machine. This is a great machine. It's got a two by four format. So this is really interesting because most of my channel, many of you guys already know if you've watched it before, deals with content creators, not companies, who are building CNC robots. In this case, we have a real company who once again, is a woodworking company crossing over to now selling CNC plans. And of course, this router is being made out of wood. And I think that's pretty obvious if they're doing woodworking that this relates exactly to them. The issue is, and this is where you can't hack a real robot. And when I say you can't hack it, there are certain areas you can cut corners on, but you cannot hack. You cannot sit back and say that this is a safe robot. Number one, wood is flammable. I don't understand how that could be avoided in terms of them marketing this and th not even addressing that. That's an elephant in the room and I'm, I'm not understanding that. We have friction present when we have cutting. We have heat present when we have cutting and yet we're building this thing out of wood. Crazy. It gets even crazier. As we go through this, Another logical point that comes up, and I brought this up many times on my channel, is how do you ground a wood chassis? Wood is an insulator. These gentlemen should know that. If you don't know that, they should have educated themselves on that, at least before selling plans. So if you can't ground the chassis, we know it's flammable. We also know that wood, over time, will absorb moisture. It also attracts bugs. I mean, the warping effect of wood, and there are different types of wood. I've had guys argue that in the past with me. Well, you know, I'm going to use such and such wood. It doesn't have as, it's not as prone to warping. The fact that you would use wood at all and consider it is something you should reconsider. Because if you do any online research, and I prefer deep seek because I'm using now AI a lot more. I'm sure many of you are. And the reason I like it is because it pulls data from all over the web. This is not a simple, well, I'm going to search a certain source and give you just an opinion. It's doing a data scrape all over and then taking all that compilation of data and then once again, giving you a direct answer. We already know this is the future, guys. We see this with our robotics. This is stuff you should be looking at right away. And I'm putting it on screen for you to review and you can read exactly what it states. And when I'm asking this question about wood and I'm bringing up my points, you can see it. So once again, I'm not making this up. This is fact. The question is, and I've said this in all of my videos, why aren't these people using these resources before they start selling stuff? I can't understand it. Let's go through some of the jargon. CNC. That stands for Computer Numeric Control. It's a bit of an outdated term, but it is stuck. So this machine uses a set of instructions and is controlled by different software. The different softwares that are in action here are a CAD program, or computer-aided design, and helps you design a part, a CAM program, computer-aided machining, all right, guys, here is where your attention to detail counts. From the second the influencer slash company, in this case, starts discussing what each component is with the machine to define their knowledge, because we see these guys always do that. Everyone wants to define their knowledge. Unfortunately, their research is usually off if it's done at all. This gentleman just explained that CAM stands for computer aided machining. That's incorrect. It stands for, sir, computer aided manufacturing. And once again, we can see here using DeepSeek, which once again, this is available to everyone. It's free to use. 
I do not know why this gentleman is not doing the research, but I tell you guys to always look, and this is not a point of having, you know, to be absolutely correct all the time, but it's a point of reference of detail of knowledge. Once you start seeing that terms are being used, they're making up definitions to terms, you'll start noticing as we go through this video that things start going way off key now of course we've already seen that the router is made out of wood watch as we go through this and you'll see exactly what i mean which creates an instruction sheet for this to operate on and finally there's a program which actually takes that instruction sheet known as g-code and gives the commands for the different motors well now we really start to see exactly where these weak points are once again dealing with general knowledge of electronics guys i cannot emphasize enough safety should always prioritize over everything and if you guys are using wood for an electronics enclosure for anything industrial related regardless if you consider your cnc a small robot and it's it's just for hobby use you can explain that shit to your insurance company and see if they will not deny your claim if they find out you use this guy's plans along with his wood that he decided to encapsulate all of his electronics in because i'm telling you right now you can see it again on screen this is fact you want to be very careful who you listen to these guys pry on the fact that cheap is better and will make it really affordable but they don't look at all of the details or even the ramifications of just common sense i mean what we're looking at here is something that you should be taking very very seriously and it's pretty scary that once again this is a company I don't consider them a content creator because they do own a company to be doing this. If you're going to get involved in doing something in my eyes and many of your eyes, you should be looking at knowing it to the T before you start selling products around it, especially when those products, when implemented incorrectly, will make people spend their hard-earned money getting nowhere or essentially putting them in danger like this does. Clamp your work onto it. Traversing this table is a gantry and that's operating in the x-axis hey guys jump over to e-dealers direct automation and check out my ebay store for the components used to make what you see in this video as well as many others that you may not even realize you need of course i'm always there if you have questions message me and i'll get back to you as soon as possible and of course i do do custom engineering as well as consultations thank you for watching this video and your support take care all right guys this is something i see done constantly with novice clients or novice potential clients and it's totally understandable you're trying to get the grip on what you're learning there's a lot to learn here and it's complex and henceforth being it's complex we deal with people like this now of course if you're learning absolutely we all go through it you'll figure it out as you learn however when you're selling you should definitely know which axis is which i mean that is as basic as things are going to get and this gentleman just explained to you that the gantry is traversing well sir the gantry is traversing on the y-axis and the gantry itself represents your x-axis and just to make sure we're all on the same page i'll put the diagram on screen so you can see it to cross-reference with now once again I will excuse anyone who is learning and anyone in general for making that mistake. I have made that mistake myself. However, I will not make that mistake when I represent I'm selling something to a client because once again, these are the details that represent you either understand what you're talking about or we're pretending to. You guys be the judge. We'll continue. This portion of our gantry operates in the y-axis and it slides back and forth. These motors are called stepper motors and they are divided into 200 individual steps that can be accessed at any point. So if you'd like to think of the motor cogging through a rotation, that might be a good way to think about it. Each of those 200 steps can then be subdivided. Now on our drivers, I can subdivide it by a factor of one or I can go all the way up by a factor of 64. So 200 divided by 64 is the number of individual steps that could be accessed in the rotation of that motor. 
All right, guys, so here we go again with him trying to wing it, and you can see his eyes are off in the distance. I brought this up earlier in the video. I said we'd discuss it. When you see these guys looking like this or like this, and they're trying to keep up and they're going back and forth, it's, of course, because they have notes. And it's really unfortunate when those notes aren't even accurate. What he's discussing with micro-stepping, and you adjust your micro-stepping based on what your drivers support and what resolution you guys require, you have to remember that you have a step angle, which typically is going to be 1 8 degree for most stepper motors. Now, 1 8 degree and 1 64th, we're looking at full step angle divided by 64 equals 1 8 degree, and then you would divide that 1 8 degree by 64, which would give you a number of 0.028125 per micro stepping. Now, what does that really mean? Because most of you could give two shits about discussing the formula. What does it translate to? What it translates to is total steps per revolution equals 200 full steps times 64 micro steps. So if you run a micro stepping drive and you're using a 164 setting, you're going to multiply your full steps by whatever setting you've set your micro stepping to, in which case we're using for this example 64, would bring you to 12,800 micro steps per revolution and that once again is breaking that revolution up into tiny tiny pieces producing the accuracy that we achieve with hybrid stepper motors so once again understanding this information is critical in you guys getting the performance you want from your equipment this is why when you try to falsify this type of knowledge there's no way around it you're basically pretending to understand the engineering involved with end users applications and that can get you in serious trouble and unfortunately take these end users money and they're not understanding exactly the effect it may have for their applications which in my eyes i don't see that as being honest you guys once again be the judge so what does that mean that means resolution that means the fineness of control that this machine has to do the work that you want it to do. Now this router is surprisingly easy to build. You know, we at Woodsmith know how to explain projects, and this one is not going to be any harder than some of our other more challenging projects to build. This is the part of the video I always find the most interesting when these guys assume that they've dumbed stuff down to make it ultra easy and everyone can do it. CNC robotics is complex. You're going to have to work to get to where you want to be. And if I have to be unfortunately the one to tell you that, tough shit, I'll tell it to you. Fact of the matter is, you're going to put your effort in and the guys that put the effort in get out exactly what they put in. There is no way to grow without being uncomfortable. Unfortunately, you'll have to go through some pain to get to where you want to be. And this guy is not doing any justice to his company or himself by trying to act like he understands something that is very difficult, they made it real simple, and it's just like the rest of their plans. Yet, truth of the matter is, sir, you've gotten wrong at least 90% of what you've explained in this video. And we've identified it, not just through me, but by outside sources that are available to you prior to you making this video. That's really comical. And the great thing is, when you get done with it, you'll have created a two by four foot format router which will be a third of the price of anything you could get commercially. This is the part of the video I always find the most interesting when the selling point that many of these content creators or companies have is that they're trying to tell you that they figured it out. They want you to realize just how much money you're saving. You're going to pay a third of the price buying this over what's commercially available on the market. Did I just define that in this video? Did I cover the fact that it is combustible in the sense that it's a fire hazard? Did I cover the fact that we've already seen that in the event, God forbid, there is a fire, you won't get paid by your insurance company because, again, he's using an electronics enclosure made out of wood? But wait, it gets better. Let's see if he's got more knowledge around the controller that's going to be controlling this robot. I'm bringing up on screen here a controller that this gentleman is building 
to once again represent this robot, you'll notice the same red USB breakout board used on virtually all of these very, very, very low quality controllers. And this is exactly what we're seeing. Now, why do I say it's a low quality controller? Well, let's look at it for a minute. USB universal serial bus is completely unstable for CNC use. Why do I say that? First and foremost, I'm not just saying that. The lead engineer and manufacturer of USB motion controllers, which is the UC100, sold by CNC Drive, based in Hungary, actually had an email go back and forth with me because I was having clients that kept complaining of disconnect issues with their USB motion controller. Well, naturally, I reached out to them. And after I reached out to them, this is what their lead engineer explained. And when you guys read this, take into account this is not just a factor of their particular device but all USB devices when dealing with CNC robotics and when you factor these in with all of the problems with power spikes grounding issues the fact that it's only running on 5 volts which makes it extremely susceptible to EMI interference you will have what's known as the dreaded disconnect and what's the disconnect the disconnect is when all of a sudden you're running your machine and for some reason something stops it and all of a sudden now you're stuck trying to figure out well is this robot stable or isn't it it's interesting because in this portion of the video this gentleman never explains any of that yet it's right here oh you need more evidence let's bring up on screen here how USB has been dictated as unstable by other end users with other controllers this is why I tell you guys understanding all of the variables and details of this genre is essential for you guys to protect your investment it's not just about how much you spend it's getting the value per dollar for when you spend it and this is what these guys never tell you we look closely at this video snapshot on screen and you can easily see he's jumping leads on the power supply we also see daisy chaining being done on the drivers there's no talk of using the proper double shielded motor cables or double shielded cables in general you certainly can't ground the controller because once again it's wood we can go on and on of course but the leading issue is safety and all of this CNC's chassis along with this electronics enclosure is a complete fire hazard. One in which, which we've already covered, can lead to you not getting paid. God forbid a fire is started, there's an investigation done, and your homeowners or business insurance won't cover you. This is why I tell you guys, be very careful. The software, and then we're going to build a couple of projects.